Hi and welcome. I'm Julianne Cost. In the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at how we can quickly add keywords to our photographs in Lightroom Classic so that we can quickly find them. I'll go ahead and select this first image and then in the keywording panel, I'll click here in order to add a keyword. I'll start typing in Arctic Fox and then tap enter or return in order to apply that. Now, if I wanted to select multiple images, I can do so in grid view. And again, I want to add that same keyword. So I'll start typing in Arctic and you'll notice that Lightroom Classic is going to auto complete when I start typing. I can then select Arctic Fox from the list and then tap enter or return in order to apply that. All right, let's select these three images of the Arctic turns. And this time I'll use the keyboard shortcut Command K on Mac or Control K on Windows in order to automatically select the keywording entry field. Then we can start typing and tap enter or return in order to apply that keyword. If I had a number of images that I wanted to keyword differently, I could select one. Again, use Command K on Mac or Control K on Windows to highlight the keywording entry field. Start typing in mushroom and then I can use Command on Mac or Control on Windows and the right arrow to move to the next image in the grid and keep the keyword field highlighted. So now I could type in mountain. And if I wanted to add fog as a separate keyword, I could use the comma and then type in fog. I'll use Command right arrow on Mac, Control right arrow on Windows. Start typing in mountain, tap enter so it'll auto complete, use the comma, type in fog, tap enter, and then again use command right arrow on Mac, control right arrow on Windows to move to the next image. Now, if you do not like the autocomplete feature, you can select the catalog settings. On Windows, it would be under the edit menu. And then under metadata, you could disable the option to offer suggestions from recently entered values. I prefer this turned on, so I will leave it enabled and close the dialog. Lightroom Classic will also offer keyword suggestions. It will list nine different suggestions based on both capture time as well as existing keywords. So as we continue to add more and more keywords, we'll see those keywords appear. I'll use Command K, type in reindeer, use command right arrow to move to the next image, and type in arctic poppy, and then scroll down just to add a few additional keywords. Here I have a harbor seal, and here we have a puffin. I'll also add the keyword iceberg. And now that we have more than nine keywords, we can see that the keyword suggestions will continue to rotate out based on that capture time proximity and existing keywords. You can also create keyword sets in Lightroom Classic. I'll use the disclosure triangle and we can see that underneath the recent keywords are again nine options that we can capture in a keyword set by using the drop down menu and then either choosing save current set as new presets or we can edit the set. This will enable us to delete or add any keywords that we want to include in the set. Since I've made changes, I could then save the current settings as a new preset. However, I've already gone ahead and created an Arctic set, so I'll just choose that. Then I'll select change and we'll see the Arctic set listed in the keyword set area. Now there are several benefits of creating custom keyword sets as opposed to using the recent keywords. One of them is that they will always appear in the same order, so they're easy to find and they're always available. Also, if I hold down the Option on Mac or Alt on Windows, Lightroom Classic displays numbers next to the keywords in the set. If I tap that number on an extended keyboard, Lightroom Classic will apply that keyword to the selected files. So let's say, for example, I select all four of these images that have Puffin in them. If I hold down the Option key, then all I need to do is type 9 on my extended keyboard, and Lightroom Classic will add the keyword to all of my images. All right, we can also add keywords using the Painter tool. I'll select it from the toolbar, and then I'll select Keywords from the drop-down menu. 
Now we can enter in keywords manually here, or I can go ahead and delete that and then hold down the shift key and I can dynamically select different keywords. I can choose from my keyword set or from my recent keywords. I'll use the eyedropper in order to pick up the Arctic Tern. Then we can scroll up and I can either click on an image to add a keyword or we can click and drag to quickly add the keyword across multiple thumbnails. I'll add it here as well. Scroll down a bit more and now there are more harbor seals. So I'll hold shift key again. I'll remove the Arctic turn by clicking with the eyedropper with the minus and then pick up harbor seal. Then we can drag over all of these harbor seals and quickly keyword them. All right, let's move to the keyword list panel. We can use the keywording list to add keywords to our images. I'll scroll down a bit and then I can just drag and drop iceberg onto any of the images that I want to add that keyword to. If I want to find all of the images that have a specific keyword applied to it, then on the right side of the keywording list, I can click on the arrow and that will automatically filter all of my photographs by that metadata keyword. All right, let's toggle that off by clicking on none. If I wanted to search for a specific keyword, I can click to filter them. I'll type in seal and we can see that it gives me the harbor seal keyword. And this can be helpful when your keyword list grows. All right, let's toggle that off. And if I ever want to make a change to a keyword, I can double click on the keyword that brings up the edit keyword tag. Let's say I wanted to change this to polar bear. When I save the change, the keyword will be updated, not only in the keyword list, but also in all of the photos that were tagged with that keyword. Now, so far we have created a flat keyword list because there's no hierarchy to it. If we were to create a keyword hierarchy, that would allow us to not only organize keywords that go together, but also allow us to apply more than one keyword at a time. Now to create a hierarchy, all we need to do is drag and drop within the keyword list. So let's say I want Arctic to be the parent category. And then I want to add a keyword animals. I can click on the plus icon, type in animals, and I'm going to uncheck put inside polar bear and then choose create. Then I'll drag animals on top of the Arctic keyword and release the cursor. And we can see now there's a hierarchy where animals is the child of Arctic. Then we can drag Arctic fox into animals and we can drag in the turn as well as the harbor seal and the polar bear, the puffin, and the reindeer. In fact, I could select animals and then click on the plus icon, type in birds, choose to put this one inside animals, choose create, and then put the puffins and the Arctic turn inside the birds. Now let's look at our keywording and I'm going to scroll down and these three images are also of the Arctic turns. So I'll select them in grid view and then I'm going to drag and drop the Arctic turn keyword. But when I drop the keyword this time, because it was in a hierarchy, although we don't see that hierarchy here, when I change the keyword tags to keywords and containing keywords, we see that not only was Arctic Tern applied, but so was the keyword birds and animals. But what if I don't want one of the keywords to be exported? Well, then I can double click on the keyword and I could uncheck include on export. And if I export this file now, the animals keyword will not be applied. You can also create hierarchical keywords using a text editor. Here we can see an example of a document that I created using those tabs in order to create the hierarchy.
There are also a number of controlled vocabulary lists that you can purchase. Once you have one of these lists, you can go to the metadata panel and then choose import keywords. And if you wanted to share keywords across different machines or with friends or peers, you can choose to export your keywords. All right, a few tips before we wrap up. You can also create a smart collection that is based on keywords so that it dynamically finds all of the images that meet a certain criteria. Let's say, for example, I select these three images here. I use Command K on Mac, Control K on Windows in order to target the keyword text entry and enter in portfolio. I'll tap enter or return in order to apply that. And then from the collections panel, I'll choose to create a smart collection, call it portfolio and choose for my criteria, other metadata, keywords, contain portfolio. Then return to my 2023 folder. And when I select additional images and add the portfolio keyword to them, we can see that they're automatically included in the portfolio smart collection. All right, let's return to the Arctic folder. And I want to remove the keyword from this reindeer. So I'll scroll up and make sure that my keyword tags are set to enter keywords and then I'll remove that. And we can see now in the keyword list that my reindeer keyword is no longer being applied to any of the images. If you ever want to purge your unused keywords, select metadata and then purge unused keywords. If I wanted to add another keyword to this image, I can click on this icon right here and that will automatically target the keyword list text entry area here where I could add a comma and then type in another keyword. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.